why games may be more important now than ever. Today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I am Professor Dungeon Master coming to you from Dungeon University, and this channel is about playing a better game of D&D. It's kind of a gloomy day here at the university. It's raining outside my window. Not that I'd be able to go anywhere because my town is quarantined, possibly much like yours. Normally I tape videos a couple weeks in advance and I'm always trying to remain cheerful and upbeat because after all, this is a, a channel about entertainment and games. Two weeks ago I was posting my Gen Con events, thinking about Gen Con, thinking about all the conventions I was going to go to this year. Now Gary Khan's canceled, Origins up in the air, but any day I expect a cancellation. Gen Con, we don't know yet, but I can't imagine if the Summer Olympics is canceled that Gen Con's going to go on. Suddenly, the world is a very different place. It's a world without game stores. It's a world without game nights. It's a world without your games, your friends, your campaign. And that hurts. Gaming is how a lot of us interact, how we socialize with our friends. It's, for me, and I'm sure for you, some of the happiest memories I have around a gaming table. It's at times like these when I think about the impact, the positive impact that gaming has had upon my life. I'm going to share with you something now, something very private, but when I was young, I was a bit of a nerd. I didn't have many friends. I wasn't very coordinated, not very athletic. I wasn't a part of a team or scouting or any organized sports or any organized anything. To be honest with you, I kind of bristled at the idea of wearing uniforms and having adults tell me where to go. And I had to have fun in an appointed place and time. And I had to go to practice. You had to practice to have fun. But I'm not knocking scouting or sports or anything like that. But it just wasn't for me. Games were how I socialized with people. As I look back on my life, I'm still socializing with some of those people. And they're still how I socialize with people. Some of those people I played with back in the 1980s, I'm still playing with today. I played with my friend Tom since he was about 12 years old. I played with my friend Gene since high school. My friend Veronica, who is a nurse right now, uh, in the midst of this, uh, been playing with her since the 1990s. Now I have friends in other areas besides gaming. And over the years, I've made friends and drifted apart from other people. But gaming, for many of my friends, it's kind of the glue that's held us together. I'm not sure with Gene and Veronica and Tom I would have those friendships if it weren't for games. The thing about Dungeons & Dragons is it invites your friends into your world, inside like your head. And you have this shared world together that you're creating, and these NPCs that only you know. Like you could be into fandom and be into superheroes and Lord of the Rings or whatever, or Star Wars, and, and you have that conversation, those conversations that fans can have. But the thing about a role-playing game, especially one that's been going as long as mine has, their stories about characters and situations only you know. And to me, that's a kind of profound link. So the thing about me is I'm an indefatigable optimist. I'm always trying to look for the bright side, and I'm a big fan of Deepak Chopra. And I was looking over at the Chopra Center for Wellness site, and I found this article. It's by Emily Holland, and it's called Six Ways to Find Happiness in Tough Times. And I wanted to share some of those ways with you, and I wanted to share a link to that below. So number one, surround yourself with friends and family. According to the Mayo Clinic, Social support can help increase mental health and can help you better handle stress. If you're fortunate to work from home and you have children, maybe this is the time to introduce some games to them, play games with them, introduce them to painting miniatures or making ultimate dungeon terrain. One of the most satisfying aspects of this channel is the Facebook group looking on there and seeing moms, dads, and, and children making Ultimate Dungeon Terrain for the first time and, and making the whole process of making it and then it's on their table and they send me pictures of it and that's a really gratifying feeling. 
It's one of the things that's the best things about this channel to know that it impacted lives in a positive way like that. So if you are forced to stay home, try to make the most of it. Spend time with your children and your family. And if you do make things with your children, please take a picture of it, post it on the Facebook group so everyone can share in that joy. Two, take pleasure in simple things. And one of the suggestions they make is reading. Generally gamers are big readers, but maybe you've got that pile of books that you've just been putting off, or maybe authors you want to return to. Classics like Conan, Farford and the Grey Mauser, H.P. Lovecraft, Carl Edward Wagner, all of Appendix N from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Maybe now is the time to return to them or to read them for the first time. Three, practice mindfulness. For me, one of the most meditative things I can do is paint miniatures. When I'm painting minis, even though I'm not the best at it, the world, it just seems to fall away. All the problems just seem to disappear because I'm focused on that one thing. Once a week I go over to my buddy Tom's house, you know him as Adhesive Tom if you, you watch our live show once a month, and we sit in his studio and we paint for two or three hours. And that's some of the most relaxing moments of the week for me. It just seems like I have no problems when I'm painting. Pro painter James Wobble, he has a great series called The Painting Pyramid, which I, I highly recommend if you want to learn how to paint better. And in it, he talks about breath control, how when you're working on something like an eyeball or an eyelash or an eyebrow, you hold your breath until you complete that stroke. So yeah, painting is a very meditative thing for me. And I know some people, when I put up crafting videos and painting videos, they'll say in the comments, I, I really just want the Dungeon Master stuff. But, and, and of course, there's the people that play D&D, Theater of the Mind, and that's great. But I always felt that uh, painting, that's one of my favorite ancillary parts of the hobby. You know, that's one of the great things about D&D. You've got hobbies and hobbies within hobbies. So again, if you have children and you have some unpainted miniatures, take some time, paint with them. Or if you live alone, maybe it's time to kill that pile of shame, that huge pile of models you've been putting aside and you haven't quite found time to get to. Maybe now is the time to make a dent in that pile of lead. And while you're doing it, maybe you can listen to an audio book or watch a fantasy movie marathon, a back-to-back -back Dark Crystal and Legend, or catch up with some great YouTube channels like Questing Beast, DM Scotty, Esther the Bard, Wylock, Black Magic Craft, Tabletop Witchcraft. He's got a lot of great stuff he posts on our Facebook group. And of course, Runehammer. I mean, that guy will give you a, a smile any day of the week. Just recently put this video up, a five-room dungeon, and it's inhabited by mer-gnomes. They're, they're a hybrid between mermaids and gnomes, and he's got this song he sings at the end of the video, like, G-N-O-M-E, living in the sea, mer-gnomes. <laughs> when that gets in my head, no matter how down I feel, all of a sudden I'm, I'm happy again. You, you just can't help but laugh at that. Four, play. Play serves as a great distraction while giving you permission to enjoy life despite your problems. Now, if you're a viewer of this channel or any other game channel, you understand the value of games, right? You still have that part of you, that little kid, that still enjoys playing. But why not use this as an opportunity to play some more? Play more games if you can. Play it with your family. And it doesn't have to be Dungeons and Dragons. It could be Monopoly. And yes, I actually like Monopoly. And no, it doesn't go on forever. If you actually play by the book, it only lasts 90 minutes to two hours. But there are other great games my family enjoys. Imhotep, Splendor, we love City of Spies, Esteril, that's a great game. We've played that, my wife, my daughter, and I, every Sunday night for more than a year. Well, more than a year. It's one of our favorite games. Maybe it's for you, it's video games. Maybe you can get on Roll D20 or figure out how to use Google Hangouts to hang out with your group and to continue your campaign. Um, I don't know a whole lot about that. I'm learning about that with you. So if you have suggestions, I want to learn about that too. So put them in the comments section below. But whatever games you can play, play more. So what am I going to do? Well, as long as I'm healthy and my family's healthy, I'm going to continue to make videos. And I have the patrons to thank for that. This is a new high definition camera. I got new lighting, new editing. I have a new computer to edit these videos on and it's all thanks to you. So I've 
thrown everything back into the channel and I'll try to produce more content. You can look on Monday nights. I'm going to try to put another video up on Monday night so I can do Dungeon Craft two nights a week as long as this lasts. I can't promise it, but check your notifications. And a lot of these videos are going to be crafting things because I have a lot of time now to craft. And patrons, I'm going to put as much stuff up on Patreon as I possibly can to say thanks for all you've done, not just for me, but for all the people who enjoy watching this channel. My mission has always been to make D&D more accessible for, for children, for everyone. I think it's, it's good for kids. I think it's good for you. I think it's good for the brain. Your mental health and your physical health are closely linked. For your mental health, it is imperative that you take time and have fun. Now, I want to say other thanks to those of you who are in the medical profession, like my friend Veronica, who are at the front lines of this problem, and also the glue that helps hold society together. Truckers, National Guard, police, grocery store workers, the people that feed us. And a final debt of gratitude to the chemists and the pharmaceutical engineers who are going to create a cure for this pandemic. And I know they will, because, again, I'm an optimist. I've noticed that human beings up until now have had a 100% track record of fixing all their problems. Right now, the smartest people in the world have come together and they're working on a single problem. And they have the benefit of the cumulative knowledge of the entire human race available to them on computers. So I have no doubt that we're going to win. This virus has no chance. It may take some time, but I have no doubt that we will get through this. Once again, for Dungeon Craft, I'm Professor Dungeon Master. And may all your roles be 20s.